Hey guys, it's John and Mitch with CBC CGCB podcast. I apologize, guys. Um, <laughs> it has been a hell of a two weeks. Um, I know last Friday we didn't have a standard podcast come out, and we apologize. Uh, I had a death in the family, so I was out of town, and I've been on the road and just running back and forth. So it's been hectic i mean as you can tell i don't even have my my props up in the background so it's it's been rough but anyways mm-hmm. we got a good topic uh this week um and it pertains to traveling or your mode of transportation so oh, yeah uh, we're going to talk about routine maintenance uh of your vehicles um i know me and mitchell are both uh not mechanics or technicians, but essentially mechanics. No, uh, I got, uh, I got, I got promoted to mechanic apparently. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, well, Mitchell's a mechanic. I'm a technician. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so we both do all of our own maintenance for the most part. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, from standard maintenance up into you know some of your medium to heavier duty stuff. Uh, I know I do all of my own maintenance up to and including two whole ass motor swaps. I've uh, done mm-hmm. it. So, I mean, uh, I mean they, but, they yeah, nothing I, better than being self sufficient. Exactly. And I'll be fucking damn if I'm going to pay somebody 80 plus an hour to work on my car. <clears throat> but yeah, um, one thing you definitely always need to do is you always have a time with your car so say when you're pumping gas uh that's a great opportunity to go check your oil um you know put your nozzle in let it fill um of course keep an eye on it like you're supposed to but you can run around to your hood and you know pull your dipstick and get get your rag to wipe it off first stick it back in then pull it out and check it if you don't and have make a sure rag. the vehicle is off oh, yeah well, yeah, make sure your vehicle's up. But if you don't have a rag, that's usually at, at the gas station, at the trash can. If you've ever noticed, they have these convenient little windshield cleaners, and there's always paper towels nearby. So, yep. Then while you're in there, you might as well check. Yep. And while you're in there, you might as well check your uh, your windshield wiper fluid, coolant level. Well, I guess, well no, you just check the overflow tank. I'm about to say, don't don't yeah. open the radio, yeah. but you don't have to open the car. Yeah, the because because whenever you're driving your vehicle and the car warms up, if you go to open your coolant cap, whether it be on your radiator or your expansion tank or what have you, that motherfucker will blow off and will scald you and mm-hmm. fuck you up. Don't do that. Real bad. Only check your coolant while it's cold. I mean, you can check the level on the side if there is a level. Um, some cars have them, some cars don't, but only do that when it's cold. Um, but yeah, check your other fluids, uh, transmission, um, windshield wiper fluid, like Mitchell said, mm-hmm. uh, power steering fluid. Um, and then mm. some other cars might have other miscellaneous fluids as well, like a, like for a clutch. Some clutches might have their own separate system. They check the fluid in it and your brake fluid as well. Yeah. Um, it's it's easy to do. I mean, you can do it. You don't have to do it every time you get gas, but I mean, like every other time you get gas or every third time you get gas, you know, it'd be good to do. And then it's also um, good along with it's also good to um, if you if you don't do it while you get gas, like once a week, just go out check it all before you go anywhere. Just make it a point to do it that way. You know, you know what's going on. You don't have any leaks or. Um, nothing's making a funny noise or something like that. And same thing with bikes too. The only difference is you're just gonna check for, excuse me, you're just gonna check for oil and coolant because that's all the fluids on a bike. And when you when you check the oil, you don't check it while it's on the kickstand. You actually have to grab it, and pull it up upright, and then check it. That way it's, because um, if you just leave it on the kickstand, it's going to look like it's empty. You're not going to see it in the window. So you actually have to grab it, pull it up, and then get down and look at it to see where it is on the uh, on the window. And then 
depending on your bike. Now, if you're on, say, like an older Harley or other V-twin, you might be running an air-cooled motor. Therefore, you're not going to have any, any, um, any coolant on it. Um, if you're running like a more modern bike um, or a street bike, a sport bike, whatever, uh, especially a full fairing bike, you're going to have to look, get either take the side fairing off, depending on which side the overflow tank is, or um, you just have to get to it. Like I know on my bikes that I've had, you always have to take off the right-hand side fairing to be able to see where your uh, coolant's at. And your brake fluid's always going to be up on your on your right-hand uh, clip on your handlebar. Yeah, and um, for cars, whenever you do your little look around, um, also check your tires. Um, if you can, take your steering wheel, turn it all one way, and make sure your tread depth is good. You can do the old penny trick. I know every single fucking one of you has at least a penny in your car. We all do. Look under your seat, whatnot. There's going to bound to be one. If not, look on the damn ground. It's probably one next to the pump. But you can use the penny trick, you know, put the penny in the tread. And if it goes, if it's below Lincoln's head, you're getting close. So, uh, or if not, yeah, that's if past Lincoln's head. Yeah, you need some new tires. Uh, and, especially um, being that no, this no, time of year is coming up. Yeah. Once it starts getting cold. Yeah, but, that, um, it's, it's raining. That too. Um, and then when you're checking bike tires, um, not so much the off-road tires, but your street tires that you're going to be using most often. Um, you're not really checking for tread depth, you're checking for wire. So generally, I mean, this is how I ride it, but I'll ride it and normally the center, because on bike tires you actually, they're the profile is rounded because you're going to be leaning in your turns. So you're going to get most of your wear right on the center as you're driving straight. And you're not going to lean that much in traffic or on highways and stuff like that. But uh, generally, once you start going, you're going to, the wire and the tire is actually going to show through before you get out of tread. Uh, so always something to keep a lookout on, especially on your steer tire or not your steer tire, your front tire. We work on floor close to, yeah. But, um, but on your, <laughs> yeah, on your front tire, um, uh, from my experience, it's gonna be, you've really gotta look for it to see it. But uh, if a back tire goes out, it's a lot easier to wrestle control of it and get it off the side. If a front tire blows, it's just gonna crumple up beneath you and you're going to go end over end or lay it down. Um, so, yeah, you just want to look for like little specks of um, metal showing through the tire compound, essentially. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and another thing with car tires, um, like I said, this uh, being that it's coming towards the end of the year, uh, you need to start checking it because, you know, it's raining here in Georgia. This is the time of year when it just starts raining and it doesn't stop. So, you know, all tires, wet road equals you in the ditch or into somebody else. So uh -huh. you need to check your tires and make sure they have good tread. And then um, if in the, in another, with the thing with tires, when you go to get them changed, a lot of tire shops are going to want to sell you that exact tire. But as long as it's the same size and you get both sides of all, both the front or both the rears, you get two at a time. They don't have to be the exact same brand or tread pattern. Just make sure they're the same size. So it'll save you some money because um, I know a lot of tire shops, they will try to take advantage of you and save you some expensive ass tires and they won't really be expensive tires. They'll just be some cheap ass tires and they're just making a markup on it. Um, I used to work at a tire shop. I've seen them do it. It's fucked up. It happens. So um, keep an eye out for that. And then when you're checking your tires, another good thing you could check is um, if you have disc brakes on your vehicle, 
Um, sometimes you can look through your wheel and see your um, your disc or the rotor. Uh, when you look at it, your rotor needs to be smooth. And if you can run your finger across it and it feels like a record and your fingernail gets caught in the groove, that means you're starting to get a bit of wear on your rotor and you need to take a look at your pads and make sure your pads are not getting too worn down. And more, most of the time, if your pads are getting worn down, there's indicators on it that makes that screeching sound that will tell you that they're going bad. But once you make it to that point, you need to get them changed. Checking your pads on some cars, you can actually check your pad without pulling it off. But most cars, that's not the case. So that's something that um, if you do your own maintenance, that would be something you would have to do at the house. You got to jack your car up, pull the wheel off, pull the caliper off, and then check your pad. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you don't, want, you don't want your record to feel like a fucking record. Uh, it's not supposed to feel like that. Nope. And then... Um, Another thing is make sure your body panels are not falling off or like your exhaust tube or yeah. your exhaust pipe is not falling off. Hang on a second. <laughs> I want to go, I want to go back. You're getting a little too far ahead because I'm still trying to cover, keep up with you on the bike stuff. Um, Got you. Okay, cool. But um, going back to the tire thing. So when you get bike tires, you don't have to get them both at the same time. It's usually a, not a bad idea. Um, but in, with bike tires, there's a lot more, I'm going to say, options as far as, because most bikes, um, so like your 600s should, be all, should all run just about the same tire sizes, your 1000s will run about the same tire sizes. Um, so you're going to be getting standardized, or it's pretty much all standardized, but you're going to be hit with a plethora of compound choices. So depending on your riding, it's going to be depending on what kind of compounds you get. So if you're doing like, if you're doing track days and you're doing, um, um, as I've heard, heard one of the guy from the local uh, sport rider, I don't want to call him a club, but like group, a spirited ride on public roads. Um, you know, something a little, a softer compound would be good because it'll give you the extra grip so you can go take or carry more speed through corners and not lose your grip. However, if you're riding something like a cruiser or a naked, well, not really a naked, I mean, it, it could work for nakeds, but like a cruiser or a torn bike or something like that, you want to go with a or any bike that you're going to daily, you want to run a harder compound because they're going to last longer. Like, for example, the original tires that came on the Honda when I bought it, so I don't remember which ones they were right off, but they were, they were about a medium compound. I, I put 7,000 miles on it before... No, I didn't. I, I tell you that I could put 3,500 miles on before I uh, changed them. And when I changed them, I put on uh, Pirelli um, Angel GTs, both front and back. And they lasted, actually, they were still on it when I sold the bike. And I, they had, I want to say about 4,500 miles on them. Um, now, on my R3, I think they're, they're Michelin tires, but they're a lot harder compound that come stock on the R3, which I haven't put, put tires on that bike since I bought it. I, but anyways, um, but those tires have, I think, right, right around 7,000 miles on them, and they're still running strong. So that's just something to look out for when you go that. And as far as, like you were talking about for checking car brakes, a lot easier on a bike. You just look at it. They're standing there, staring you in the face. They're nice and exposed. Um, some bikes will have two calipers on the front, one in the back, but most of the time you'll see one on the front, one in the back. Um, but you also run in two different fluid reservoirs. So you have your front brakes, which are running off your handle. And then you have your rear brakes, which is a foot pedal, which your reservoir is usually up and behind. So 
on my Honda, you actually had to take the seat off and the rear cowling off to get to your brake rest floor. On my R3, it's actually just sitting kind of exposed right above your rear set on that side. Um, and it usually will be in one of those two places. Um, but and another thing you always need to check when you're checking like your brakes and your tires is your chains and your chain and your sprockets. These are really important. You always want to keep, uh, I, I used to um, lube my chain about once every other week and then once a month I would go through and actually retention the chain. Um, just because once you start getting slack, when you start putting more wear on your sprockets, you start rounding teeth off, eventually breaking it. So you want to keep good tension on there. And it, what it also does is it makes it a lot smoother, right? Because when you have a loose, a loose worn chain, it's real jerky and not real fun to ride and gear shifts are a little rough. Um, but yeah, so I think we're caught up now. <laughs> so now what were you saying about uh, body panels? Yeah, so uh, make sure your car's body panels are not like falling off. A lot of car panels uh, snap in. So if it looks like there's not like a mounting spot, like a screw or anything, just take your panel and just kind of push it back in there. And if it fits, like don't force it, you know, don't be crazy, but just kind of push it in there. If it fits, you know, just kind of get a little pop and it, it should snap back in if, if that's the case. And um, make sure you after you're done checking your fluids, shut your hood and make sure it's down all the way. Press down on it in the center, about where the little loop thing is. If you don't, if you don't know what the latch looks like, uh, pull your hood down, press down on it, make sure it's down. Give it a good tug up and make sure it's come up. And then you know, just make your way around the car and um, get to the rear car. You know, just kind of look down, make sure your muffler is not falling off or anything. And uh, it's, a lot of this stuff is just common sense, you know, but you just got to, you know, give your car a good look over because sometimes a lot of people don't look at the back of their car. See, I remember and unless, I, I remember going on a ride and a uh, dude's muffler fell off his bike in the middle of the ride. <laughs> it was pretty fucking funny. He was in the ride, what? It's like, it's like, well, you know who that was. I mean, granted, they were like, Three other bikes are already straight piped, but now we just have a fourth. Dang. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah, I saw a, um, on that same ride a fucking S1000 RR new parked at the Savannah Mall. And uh, he got back on and get on it, and all of a sudden you just saw a big old stream of white smoke coming out the exhaust. Mm -hmm. And this dude had dropped a shit ton of money on it. Like he had the full like European carbon fiber fairings on it. And it was a beautiful bike. But mm. It's funny you say that, that to go off top of it a little bit. Uh, my wife's seen uh, one of those the other day on Facebook for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy's in the military. He's going to Hawaii, so he couldn't pay it with him. So he was selling it. And it was a friend of hers. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll pick it up. He'll match my car. It was legit. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was like, yeah, send, send it to me. I'll get the old boy a hauler and I'll go pick it up. And uh, so, all right, cool. Send it to me. Sixteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. "Oh my god!" What year was it? I mean, granted, I get it was like an eighteen or nineteen. It was very new. I mean, that's like half fucking price new. Yeah, and I was like, I, I don't, I don't know why. To me, I thought it would be like just you know. A jigsaw or something like oh well, fucking like six seven grand you know mm -mm. I don't pick that up but mm -mm. Not, <laughs> not a bummer dude yeah, I'm clearly like I'm, I was looking at the GS which is their um, that's their big boxer motor uh, adventure bike oh yeah now just for shits and giggles I priced one out because I was thinking about picking one up for my birthday this year twenty nine mm -hmm. eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding them used. I think the cheapest one I found used wasn't the the R1200. It was the F800, and they still wanted mm -hmm. 9,500 bucks for it. Jesus, that is wild. Mm -hmm. 
But anyway, back to maintenance. Um, like I said at the beginning, I did a lot of driving here recently, and uh, I did my oil change in between. Um, if you do your own oil change when you jack your car up, if you jack your car up, use jack stands. No ifs, ands, or buts. Put jack Don't stands use Harbor bitch. Freight jack stands. <laughs> Don't use Wish.com or Hardware Freight jack stands. Well, they already have uh, recalls. Actually, they've got several recalls because of them fucking falling on people. Yeah. And then um, that little panel that's underneath your car that you got to take off to get to everything, put that motherfucker back on. Because not only does it protect your car, but it's going to protect yourself later on down the road when you go to change the oil and you're not going to have shit falling in your face because that panel's there. Now, for me, unfortunately, I went to take my panel off when I went to change my oil, and I haven't told you this, Mitchell, but between one of the many trips I made between here and Valhasta, I didn't hit an armadillo. It was already dead in the road, but I had to hover over him. And a lot of y'all don't know this, my BMW was lowered. So if I run over a fucking leaf, I feel it. So an armadillo, this up-armored fucking possum, if you will, uh, I hit, and it destroyed my belly pan. Um, half of it is just looks like it got cut away. Um, it's just not there. So half of my engine bay underneath is exposed, so I got to find a new one. Um, luckily, it cross-references to some other model BMW, so I can go to the pick and pull and grab another one that's not hopefully torn up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, put that thing back on there. It'll make, it keeps your engine bay nice and clean, and when you go up in there to work, you don't got a bunch of dirt and rust and shit falling in your eyes because it's the worst. See, it sucks. I've never had a vehicle that had one of those. Yeah, so I never did either until I had like a a new work car, you know. Because mm -hmm. I mean, neither of us got never had a lot of money, so we've always had old cars and shit. So our shit didn't have belly pans and whatnot. It was just a truck and it's just a big ass open spot. <clears throat> but now I, I've, I've had a few cars now that has had. The pan and I always put it back on just to save myself later on and it, it will save you as well so you know put that bitch back on there and another thing while you're down there doing your oil change um, that's a good time to inspect other things check your suspension check your bushings um, t just touch bolts you don't have to crank on it just touch it if it and that's a good way to check and see if something's loose so if you touch it and it's loose, you need to fix that shit right then because it's been loose for a minute. Because it don't just get loose real fast. It slowly happens over time. So put your hands on stuff. If you've got an older vehicle, you might have grease fittings on the bottom of your car in certain areas. Grease them bitches. Get your don't, grease gun. Don't forget to grease your ball joints if you got them. Because I've made that mistake. And it cost me. Mm -hmm. And it was a very uncomfortable ride mm -hmm. until I got it fixed. <laughs> that was on my, uh, my CK1500. Well, and uh, with trucks, um, sometimes your leaf springs can get a little noisy. Mm -hmm. Spray a little bit of lube on there. Get you some WD-40, spray up in there. I'm telling you, you'll take it away. And some of those, um, some of your bushings will start to get squeaky. Hit it with some grease. Let it seep in there a little bit. And it'll help. It'll help. It's not going to completely take it away, but it'll help. Um, I mean, if a truck don't squeak, is it really a truck? I mean, you're right. You're right. And speaking of truck, uh, I'll have a mini truck video coming out soon. 
So please, guys, you be patient with me. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've been uh, false in the law, so mm -hmm. there's that. Um, yeah, we both kind of have been. That's why you've been seeing a little bit less content than normal. I was planning on having a yeah. video push yesterday, but or not yesterday, Wednesday. We're recording this on a Thursday, but fuck, just life keeps getting in the way. Like I've been at, like really I'm so glad I have AC now though, because we've been without it for about a week after our thermostat died. Oh man, it's been rough. I can't imagine. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, uh, just standard maintenance uh, on on your your vehicles is is key to saving you money and keeping you safe, you and your family safe. Uh, I've seen it before; people just don't maintain their shit, and your car will break down and can cost you a lot of money. So if you don't maintain your own vehicle, I mean, a lot of places do it for not, not that much. I mean, like Jiffy Lube's like fucking $30 to get your oil change. Granted, I don't fucking trust Jiffy Lube, but you know, if that's all you've got, that's all you've got, then use it. Um, but, you know, just go out there, check your stuff, man. It's just being safe. Uh, I, I mean, today I was driving in the rain and there was a car in front of me, clearly had bald ass tires all over the road. It was insane. Granted, I'm pretty sure they were on fucking meth too, but uh, that's beside the point. Um, I got away from them quickly, but still, yeah, just take your shit. Be safe, people. It's it's too easy. And if you don't know how, message me, message Mitchell. Fucking Google it. I mean, a lot of us have these fucking phones. My kid, it's cute. Um, but yeah, Chuck and hop on Google. How to insert your car, do this. I mean, it's, it's very simple. I mean, my mom always asks me, about stuff about her car and whatnot. And I'm not an expert by any means. So that don't mean I know everything about every car. So when my mom's telling me like, hey, I need this done on my car, do you know how to do it? I'm like, boom, Google, find me a YouTube video and then give me a roundabout idea of what's going on in that area. Mm. And then I can use what I do know and apply it. So if you're somewhat mechanically inclined, you can do that. But don't just be fucking hopping on Google and thinking you're going to rebuild a fucking motor overnight. It's oh, God, no. No, that's you. <laughs> if, if, if you. If you're like, man, I don't know why my motor's making a sound. It's going to pull it apart. Next thing you know, you got bolts missing. You got things flung over here. Your 10 millimeters done run off from you. Um, fucking piston number four decided to walk right on out, you know. That's, that's a bad day. That's a bad week. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Don't go doing that. Like, you, need, you that's something. I mean, it's possible to do by yourself, but you got to be really, really experienced to know what you're doing with that. But I was having a thought, mm -hmm. and then I got all full of tangent, and I don't forgot what I thought was. Oh yeah, I remember now. Keep a small tool kit in your car. Yes. Doesn't have to be much. Yes, I cannot. Like a little, like multi, like one of them quick change screwdrivers and like a, a tire gauge. Um, tire pressure is important. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Especially on bikes. Um, so tire gauge, um, tire patch kit if you don't have a spare on your car, um, and learn how to how to use it. Um, well, it's, uh, probably like a small Some little script. Yeah. Um, one thing that I keep on me that's this is mainly a bike thing, but usually I have a backpack, and I'm one day I might do a video where I go over you know what I keep in my backpack on my bike for any length of time. Um, but I usually keep like a um, a uh, a siphon hose. Just because, you know, you might be out. Because there are bikes out there. Jixxers are notorious for this. They don't have fuel gauges on them. 
So you just got to sit there and shake it and pull the cap up and see how much gas you got. Well, you can't do that if you're going on, you know, like an hour, two-hour drive. And if you run out of gas, well, you ain't got a gas can. So if someone pulls up, you just put a little bit of gas, just enough to get you to the next, uh, to the next uh, gas station. So not a bad thing to keep. No. And if you don't carry one of these on your person, have one in your toolkit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, all right. Um, I know a lot of people keep flares in the car. That's, that's an optional thing. Uh, we really don't do that around here where, where I'm from. I know it's more of like a mountain thing. Uh, yeah, no, flares around here would just set the whole fucking forest on fire. Yeah, yeah essentially, because we go fucking years at a time without rain and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, uh, flares, you know, cool, whatever. Um, flashlight. Mm -hmm. A good flashlight for an emergency kit. Um, and ensure if it's have one and have some batteries extra to go with it. If not, why do you want it in that real look? I mean, shit. We got the ones, the, the shape weight lights. I can't remember what I mean, they're called, but my, my grandfather was a big thing of this he's just a giant fucking nerd but he, he bought he bought me and my brother one i don't even know where they are now i don't even know i still have it but it was one of the ones you just shook it like this and then turned on the light and it and it died and you just shake it again and it turns on yeah me and you got one the same year for christmas did we because i got one too okay because yeah. i remember i was like bro check this shit out and i pulled it out and showed it to you you're like no way i got one too <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, uh, keep the flashlight. I mean, you don't know what's going on unless you see it. So, you know, you got to have some light on the subject. Four way. What up? Four way, yes. Um, if, if, you know, of course, you need a four way to get your wheel off and a jack. Which most cars um, usually have uh, a lug, lug nut wrench for the particular size of the car and a jack, but if you buy one and don't have that, just like buy one of them little, I oh, forget what they're called, but they're like little pantograph jacks. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I collect them real small and you can just, or a bottle jack will work too. Um, another thing, uh, in the off chance, if you do run out of gas and you're in a vehicle that takes diesel or a higher octane car. So like my car only takes 93 octane. If you're driving a vehicle like that and you run out of fuel and you call up whoever your insurance is, hey, I ran out of fuel, I need some. Tell them my car runs on XYZ fuel and make sure that whoever's rescuing you brings needed that needed fuel because if not, they're gonna come out there with some fucking 89 and dump in your fucking car. And, and not give a shit less. They're just doing their job. So mm -hmm. make sure you let it be known. Like, hey, my car. I mean, granted, you should be letting your car run that low on fuel to begin with because it'll fuck your fuel pump up. But that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. um, keep gas in your car. Because <clears throat> the, the fuel cools the, the end tank pump. So there's not fuel around it to cool it. It's going to get hot and literally burn up. Yep. So... Keep fuel in the tank. That's why I had to replace yeah. fucking fuel pump in that truck every year and a half. Well, that happens. Mm -hmm. It sucks, but it happens. Um, but yeah, just keep your maintenance up to date, people. And, you know, like I said, if you need help, ask. A lot of people don't mind uh, helping out. Or, or teaching, actually. I love teaching people how to work on their own shit. It's very satisfying to know that you can take this skill set and have someone else do it, and they are sufficient and not have to depend on somebody. Um, that's I just, just love the fact of not having to depend on somebody. Mm -hmm. I would love to teach anybody else how to do the same. Um, but, yeah, I think that kind of covers what I wanted to talk about. Um, I know... Uh, next podcast, I kind of want to have um, something a bit different. Uh, we got a few different things in the works, so 
we'll talk about our next podcast, maybe make it, um, what's the word I'm thinking of here, uh, organized. Um, yes. That's the word I was like, because uh, this was, you know, kind of, we wanted to at least put something out, you know, and me and Mitchell kind of had the same idea at the same time. We're like, well, what are we going to talk about? Oh, well, we'll talk about maintenance. Cool. Yeah, that's it. No word. Because that's what we do all so, day anyway. So yeah, just droning yeah. on, just turning wrenches. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. But uh, you got anything, Mitch? For the... I don't think so. I mean, but on the on the the leg of you know, preventing the maintenance, fucking take care of your home too because I just had to replace one of these. Yes. And, re- and sure. I know a lot of people don't like to read instruction manual, but I followed for three hours because I didn't when I shouldn't have had to. So I literally had the old lady come home and throw the instruction book at me and smack me in the face with it. <laughs> so, nice. And otherwise, I don't think I got anything else. Um, no, I mean I did. I managed. I did. I did manage to find me some, some gunpowder. Just waiting on no. finding primers now. No. So I might do a reloading video one of these days. I just gotta. I can't yeah. do it without primers. That's true. That is true. Got plenty of brass. Uh, you got powder. Mm-hmm. But I think that's it for today. So, yeah. Well, since that's the case, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, guys, we really appreciate y'all watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, it always helps out a lot. Hit the little bell. I get notifications. Uh, we really appreciate you guys watching and being patient with us. I love the messages from people that do watch and listen. Um, it's awesome. Love talking to you guys. Uh, so please give us a shout out. If you have any suggestions, please give, please leave a comment or messages. Uh, we mm-hmm. uh, criticisms as well. So, hey, you fucking suck. Well, tell us we fucking suck. Uh, just let us know. Um, but yeah, guys. Y'all be safe. Check your cars. Um, go vote. Y'all be safe. Y'all have a good one. See you guys.